Hi everyone, I'm back doing a short video. I've been meaning to want to do this video for quite a while and it's getting to the point where now the milkweed flowers have gone by. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the uh, milkweed pods because now that's where we're kind of at. And I'm gonna show you how to cook them safely and eat them because they're yummy. So the common is milkweed, which is this one here, is the only one that is um, edible. Um, its Latin name is Asclepius syriaca, and I probably botched that, but I'm not very good at my Latin. <laughs> um, they are mildly toxic, so you, you don't eat them raw, so we have to cook them, and I'm going to show you how to cook those. Um, you have to properly prepare them and we prepare them like when we used to do them years ago, my teachers, um, we always put them in like two to three um, pots of boiling water and you, the key is to never start these on a pot of cold water and throw them in. You want your water already boiling and then you throw them in because the boiling uh, removes the um, milky sap that and I'm going to show you that. That's why it's called milkweed because it has a lot of milky, um, kind of like a lactuca milk substance, which is toxic. It's crazy because it is toxic, but then there are properties where it's used for other things where it's not toxic. So just got to really know this plant. It's, it's, it's a great plant and it's a great edible. So the edible parts really on this are the pods. And usually you want them like the size of your thumb. Like that's perfect. This is perfect. These are good. I could probably get away with this one too. So I'm probably gonna pick these. I have a bunch here. I left them in my greenhouse growing purposely to do the video. Um, so we're gonna bring those in and we're gonna cook those because that's all I have. I don't have the flowers. The flowers have already gone by, but I'll talk about them real quick. So in the springtime, um, also when they're shoots and they're small and they're probably about that big, you have to really know what you are getting because it could be dogbane. And dogbane, oh, they'll grow right next to milkweed and they look exactly the same when they start growing. Um, the difference is when you cut into the, the stalk, uh, the milkweed will be hollow. And let me show you. I did cut one previously here. So the, see how hollow it is? Where the dog bane will not be, a, it'll be more solid on the inside. And you can see that milky sap. So um, just wash your hands and don't get your hands in your eyes because the milky sap is not, doesn't do very well in your eyes. Um, you can pick the shoots when they're really little. Like I said already, maybe that big or maybe a little bit bigger than that. You can cut those up. You can eat the leaves, the stalk. Um, you can throw them in boiling water for about five minutes and then take them out and then cook them any way you want. I, I would put them in a couple boiling waters just to make sure that you get all the sap out because that's how we were taught. We don't like to play around with mother, we don't mess with mother nature. So also the, um, the silk inside these, when we were kids, and it's so funny, when we were kids, we would open these up and pull all the seeds out and we always played with these and we never knew the sap was toxic and we probably wiped our eyes and our mouth and who knows. How many people have played with these? I know quite a few people have. Um, and towards the end of the fall, these guys will be loaded with seeds. <laughs> I know I played with them and we used to play with the silk inside of them. Um, the silk inside here is a substitute for cheese. Yep. They use it as a cheese substitute. And you'll see that when we cook them, we'll open them up and I'll show them to you. Uh, so <laughs> the pink flowers, when they come out, this is the pink flowers. I've already gone by and they smell so nice. Like, it's just amazing. If you can get in a field of those and just smell them, they smell beautiful. Um, so there's not a whole lot more really to talk about this plant, except for the fact that you want to be careful that the lookalikes, you know, the butterfly weed and the um, the butterfly weed has red and uh, orange flowers. Those are toxic. You don't want to eat those. 
so they're similar looking. Um, so when you cook up the, the stalks, um, when they're smaller shoots, they do taste like, I don't know, like, I think they taste a little bit like asparagus or spinach or even like a little bit of like a broccoli, I guess. Um, so the medicinal uses of this is you can uh, use the sap. They use it on warts to remove warts. And they, the roots were chewed to treat dysentery. And so they also made salves with this and, and it was used to treat swelling, rashes, cough, uh, fevers. I suppose they put the salve on the chest, uh, asthma, lung disease. Uh, the fibers from the stems were used to make belts because the fibers are so thick. And I've known a lot of plants where the fibers are really thick on these, um, on the stalks, like nettles. You can make a cordage with the nettles. Um, so the roots were uh, used to treat uh, rheumatism and pleurisy. I'm sure there's other things that they were used for. And the fluff that's inside these when they get really big, uh, the military, they stuffed military jackets with them. I wonder how many of those took to fill their jackets with. I guess it was an experiment they were doing. Um, and it's also excellent in absorbing crude oil and toxins. So that's pretty cool. So I'm not gonna say a whole lot more about these guys. Um, I, I will show you this though. So when you break this, you're automatically going to see this milky substance and that's why it's called milkweed. Oh, I got a bunch of bees in here. Um, you see that? It's like a lactuca, it's a thick. I'm sure there's lots of uses for that milk sap, but I haven't really. <laughs> challenge that part of it all but you see you see it, it it's going to like just continue to milk see that it's like milking the cow <laughs> but that is why it's called milkweed because it's full of the sappy milk um, yeah you can see the aphids got on my plants here too a lot of aphids getting this time of the year but it's all right we can wash these little guys off we're gonna wash them and we're gonna boil them in a couple changes of water so that's it for the milkweed for right now, and I really wish I'd have came out and did this video a little sooner. Um, I think next year, come springtime, I will do the shoots and when the flowers come out. So we'll have the flowers and the shoots next uh, springtime. For now, we're going to do the pods. So we'll see you inside, and take care, and hit the like button. You know, all that fancy stuff that goes along with doing videos. Um, tell your friends. Uh, go on my you, my Facebook is VermontPureHerbs.com and so is my Facebook and uh, we'll see you there and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.